Elon Musk's SpaceX, the aerospace company, is currently at its prime with the Falcon and Starship, but they never stop and will continue to do many things that no other organization in the space race could dream of. And recently, SpaceX's tycoon announced their plans to build its own space base on the moon. This revelation has shocked NASA along with Russia and China as SpaceX aims to establish its lunar outpost using a fleet of Starship HLS aircraft. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is a dream development. Recently, it completed its third test flight during which the spacecraft successfully took off and correctly separated from its first stage. Although the spacecraft and the booster that propelled it to orbital speed were lost, the mission achieved its goal and the engineers behind the feet managed to gather enough information to further improve it. In line with Elon's long-standing ideal, it's evident that SpaceX will continue pushing the boundaries of space exploration to new interplanetary heights. This was vividly demonstrated during Elon's discussion at Starbase, also broadcast on X, where he elaborated on the progress and milestones of Starship's program, promising to unveil new perspectives on the world's most unique rocket, including the introduction of a new moon base. We want to build a moon base, Moon Base Alpha. Um, and have a permanently uh, occupied uh, base on the moon. So, first to understand what Elon Musk has mentioned, let's take a look at how the design of the Starship rocket will land on the moon. Well, it's going to be a specialized ship for the moon, um, like this. <laughs> um, so the moon, obviously, there's no mechazella, so we need la landing legs. And uh, you don't need a heat shield, and uh, you don't need flaps, because there's no atmosphere. Indeed, the Starship HLS is a landing craft providing spacious crew cabins for astronauts and massive payload capabilities. With the current variant known as Starship V1, the payload's 100 tons. However, if Elon and SpaceX decide to build the HLS on the scale of Starship V3, that payload capacity goes up to over 200 tons. This would entail an increase in propellant tanks, although precise information on the scale of the increase is not available. Essentially, SpaceX would be able to load additional fuel into the lander. This decision could be an effort to enhance the efficiency of the Starship for lunar missions, which require significantly more delta V velocity change compared to flights to low Earth orbit. Additionally, the HLS Starship must stay in lunar orbit for up to 100 days while awaiting the crew. Larger propellant tanks would allow it to carry enough liquid methane and oxygen for landing, although some propellant loss occurs as it boils off into space during the flight. As SpaceX increasingly ramps up their launches in the future with improvements to the various versions of the Starship, Starship's HLS will also inherit corresponding advantages and ensure even more excitement. With more flight tests, significant vehicle upgrades, and missions returning astronauts to the surface of the moon with NASA's Artemis program all coming soon, excitement will continue to be guaranteed with Starship, SpaceX tweeted, promising a surprise appearance for this variant. Alongside these upgrades, other basic designs of the Starship HLS seem to have remained unchanged or changed very little. The Starship HLS will never re-enter an atmosphere. Therefore, it doesn't need a heat shield or flight control services. This design choice reduces its mass and the number of tanker Starship launches needed for refueling. In contrast to earlier HLS designs with multiple stages, the entire spacecraft serves as both an ascent and descent stage. The Starship HLS features six Raptor engines mounted at the tail and can go up to nine with the Starship V3 variant, used for launch and most landing and ascent maneuvers. When approaching the lunar surface within 100 meters, this variant will employ high-thrust reaction control system thrusters located mid-body to avoid disturbing the lunar regolith with engine exhaust. These thrusters burn gaseous oxygen and methane instead of the liquid forms used by Raptors. Power supplied by huge solar panels encircling the vehicle. On the moon, there won't be a Mechazilla catching tower, so the Starship HLS naturally has to be equipped with an additional four landing legs to be able to land balanced on the lunar surface. Well, designing Starship HLS for moon landing is one thing, but Elon has shown the capabilities of the spacecraft go far beyond that. Starship will enable humanity to build a long-term base on the moon, and if Musk's words hold true, it'll resemble the Alpha Moon Base from space in 1999. Fictional Moon Base Alpha, located in the moon crater Plato and constructed of quarried rock and ores, Moon Base Alpha is 4 kilometers in diameter and extends up to 1 kilometer in areas below the lunar surface. The complex extends outward from the central main mission tower in a series of concentrically arranged curved structures connected by travel tube transit tunnels. Apart from the central tower, the surface building are two to three stories in height. 
Moonbase Alpha would become a vital node for SpaceX's space operations, serving as a starting and arrival point for lunar missions. Musk's plans obviously far exceed NASA's goal for a lunar starship. This isn't the first time Musk has expressed interest in establishing a base on the moon. Back in 21, Musk stated he wanted to establish a long-term residency on the moon. He stated, It's been almost half a century since humans were last on the moon. That's too long. We need to get back up there and have a permanent base on the moon. Again, like a big permanently occupied base on the moon. SpaceX's Starship Lunar Base is that of a horizontal Starship HLS placed on the lunar south pole, on top of the rim of the Shackleton Crater. The base will be covered by a 5-meter layer of regolith, the material covering most of the lunar surface, to protect the base from radiation and micrometeorite impacts. Only the airlocks and the nose hatch will be uncovered from the regolith. One of the airlocks will be transformed into an observation deck that will have a permanent view of the Earth over the lunar horizon. Expansion possibilities will be available through the nose hatch. The interior will have three levels that span the entire length of the vehicle, including the former methane and oxygen tanks. To accomplish this, SpaceX needs two variants of Starship. The first will be the basic variant of the HLS spacecraft. Upon landing on the moon and unloading the cargo, the cargo section can be detached from the tankage section of the HLS Starship using a mobile crane brought to the moon on an earlier flight. On the moon, the lunar crawler will deliver a large cargo section to a predetermined location at the facility. Here, the mobile crane will lower the cargo section horizontally onto the moon's surface, where it can either stand alone or be connected to other HLS cargo sections. Once in place, the cargo section will be covered with lunar regolith to provide shielding from radiation and micrometeorites. After the Raptor engines are removed, the lower section of this HLS starship containing the fuel tanks is transported to Earth for reuse on future starships. Once the engines are detached, the HLS lower section is repurposed as a part of a storage tank farm for the facility. It's transported to a suitable location where it's either placed horizontally and covered with regolith for insulation from the sun or stays upright. If left upright, a canopy can be erected to shield the tankage from direct sunlight, reducing the boil off of cryogenic liquid stored inside. The lower gravity of the moon makes such construction and manipulation easier compared to Earth. This ensures surplus lunar starships are utilized productively to create habitats, lunar farms, or other components of a successful infrastructure. The second variant of the one-way lunar starship is based on the tanker variant designed to refuel depots in Earth orbit. Lunar facilities will require a substantial mass of volatiles to support their operations, particularly for agriculture and industrial activities. The essential volatiles needed include hydrogen, methane, nitrogen, and water. Hydrogen serves as fuel or can be combined with oxygen generated from lunar regolith to produce water. Methane is used as fuel for starships returning back to Earth. Nitrogen is crucial for lunar agriculture and has various industrial applications. If there's no nearby water source on the moon, water can be transported by these tanker starships to support lunar development. Upon reaching the moon, the tanker starship and its volatile payload are integrated into the tank farm of lunar facilities. The starship's Raptor engines and any unnecessary flight control systems are removed for eventual return to Earth and use on future missions. In general, establishing a long-term base on the moon is a wise move for SpaceX. This not only brings benefits to boost the commercial economy on the moon for the whole world, but also serves as a stepping stone for SpaceX to leverage in efficiently building on Mars. Humanity should have a moon base, cities on Mars, and be out there among the stars, Elon Musk said. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.